It feels like app icons are so boring these days. Bland colors, simple shapes, and nothing with creativity. Well, in this video, I'm fixing all that by turning three popular minimal desktop icons into ultra realistic masterpieces. Cause somebody needs to save humanity from this oversimplified world we live in. This video is sponsored by Logitech. First up is Safari, everybody's absolute favorite web browser. Okay, well maybe not everybody's favorite, but I do think it has the potential to be a really cool realistic icon. This compass though is way too clean and shiny. I mean, it's like it's never even been taken out on an actual Safari in the wilderness of Africa or something. Luckily, my new version will remedy that, starting with a super sturdy metal case that's sure to stand up to even the harshest of environments. But I do still want a nice classic look, the sun beating down on it from the upper right hand corner. Of course, a sharper shadow around the rings will help them feel more rounded, aided by some highlights on the opposite side. I'm thinking this inner ring needs to be raised above the outer one, so I'm gonna get a big shadow across the entire back part of that ring. Now this is supposed to be metal, but right now it just looks like clay. So to remedy that, we need a scratchy metal texture. But as you can probably see, a simple straight brushed one just kind of makes the image look way too flat. Luckily, through the magic of a radial brush texture, we can get something with more of that rounded feel. Now, unlike the old icon, this compass has been put through its paces. So a big chunky layer of grunge will show off all that wear and tear. Now we'll need somewhere to hold all the important compassy parts. So I'll construct an inner shell to do just that. Now Logitech, who graciously sponsored this video, sent me their brand new MX Creative console to use on this project. It's a two piece set, half of which is this cool little panel here where all the buttons are full color LCD screens. They can trigger keyboard shortcuts, change tools, open apps, and a host of other things. I switch tools all the time in Photoshop, so being able to just press a button and change the lasso tool so I can move around some of my painting is super handy. Or I can just zoom in here and switch right back to the brush tool to quickly paint some shadows along this rim. Let's get that same radial metal texture in here, along with that sweet layer of grunge. Logitech also has the Options Plus app that lets you customize what every button does for any app that you want. So in Photoshop, I want this button to be assigned to the ellipse tool. And with a quick press, I can create a small gap, splitting that shell into two pieces just so it doesn't feel so plain. Of course, that'll be catching a beautiful streak of light. The really neat part is you can customize each button's icons or color, or you can even upload your own images. So all the realistic icons I'm gonna be making today are going right on that keypad, so I'll have quick access to them. Now we're gonna need a directional key printed onto our paper here, which seems like a lot of trouble to make myself, so I'm just gonna go find one made by somebody else, of which I have found this really nice vector file of one. What's really cool is that the keypad displays different actions based on the app that you have open. So here in Illustrator, I've set up a copy button and then quickly paste that into Photoshop. Get that sized up to scale, and then come in with a splotty brush to wear away some of this graphic to match the old paper it's printed on. Finally, a big dark shadow being cast from the shell onto the paper. Now, what a little mystery in this scene. So what if this compass is just laying around on like a dirt path or something? As if somebody dropped it during a long journey, or maybe they were attacked by a ravenous baboon and this is all that's left of them. Either way, before we put in the actual compass needle, we're gonna need some glass to protect it. Now, obviously glass is transparent. So how do you paint it? Well, even though you can't see glass, you can see the light bouncing off of it. Like this soft blanket overlaying everything, some of which will be blocked by the metal rim around it. And then we might also get a sharper, more prominent shine up in the same corner that follows the domed shape of the glass, slowly fading out towards the center. Now, many times when glass is shaped like this, it'll produce a really intense shine on the side opposite of the main light source. Kind of similar to how a magnifying glass can focus sunlight into a beam, which means our paper is gonna really brighten up in that area. And we'll even get some caustic light coming from that hitting the ground. Then as a slightly unrealistic, but artistic decision, let's darken up this whole side beneath the glass just to give the entire shape more contrast and dimension. A few reflections from nearby objects for a little extra detail. And man, if this thing is literally laying in the dirt, I think a decent amount of dust is in order. Just remember that the dust is mainly visible in the lighter areas as the light is hitting it, and it'll be pretty subtle in the dark spots. I also imagine hitting the hard coarse ground would probably put a sizable crack in this glass. And one more little cool feature about the keypad is that it's got multiple pages of actions so I can easily choose the liquify tool, for example, if I wanted to slightly tweak the way some of these cracks are shaped. Now, even though regular glass doesn't cast shadows, anytime it cracks though, that definitely will cause a shadow. Looking at this, I think our metal needs a little more shine. So I'll just come in here and add a few streaks for good measure. And then why don't we even have the case be scratched and damaged like the glass? Cause you know, it's definitely gonna get its fair share of damage. Get some nice highlights on those to help them really pop out from afar, finishing up with a little bounce lighting coming off of the ground. Finally, we arguably need the most important part of the compass, the needle. Half of which will be red to match the original Safari icon, along with a shadow down the middle to show off its bent shape. Unlike the original though, this one is going to have a metal pin in the center to hold that needle up so it can freely spin above the paper surface. Just get in some similar texture and all that shading that's gonna make it look real. Now a thin metal object like this should have a sharp little edge catching some nice rim light and an equally sharp shadow on the other side. Now since our cracked glass is gonna basically let in all the elements, I'm kinda thinking the paint over that needle is gonna be cracking and chipping away. And 
duplicating a lighter version of that texture makes all these cracks feel a lot more 3D. Lastly, of course, a healthy amount of grunge, a soft drop shadow from the needle, and a tiny touch of bloom to finish this off. And with that, we have turned our plain old safari icon into a rustic compass that has seen its fair share of excitement and adventure. So our first icon is done, and it can go into its slot here on the keypad. And up next, we have Telegram, one of the most popular messaging apps in the world. And man, I just love their little paper airplane logo, just like back in the day when you throw these things to your friends across the classroom to send them some type of message. Or if you were like me, you just throw them to yourself. So our first step in turning this into a realistic airplane is to get down some basic shapes. Everybody knows roughly what the structure should look like with the big main fold right down the middle, which the front pieces tuck into. And if you believe the rumors, bending up the corners to create these little flaps in the back supposedly helps it fly straighter, though I'm not entirely convinced. Now at this point, all the pieces kind of run together, but through the power of shading, we will fix that. Whenever I'm painting shading like this, that second piece of the creative console, the dial pad, comes in super handy. With a large dial, a smooth vertical roller, and four buttons, all of which are fully customizable, the control you have with this thing is really great. I use the Options Plus app to set my dial to control my brush size. That way I can come into a variety of places, like this small little flap, and shade it easily. I set the vertical roller to control my brush's opacity so I can get lighter or darker whenever I want. Of course, these two buttons up here are set to undo and redo, because boy, do I need those a lot. We'll need some sharper shadows in these areas where the paper folds over itself. And you know, making airplanes is a messy business, so we're gonna get a few dents and dings along the way. Speaking of which, this paper is going to be extra thick, so this edge has at least a small chance of being seen when this icon is really, really tiny. Now, of course, paper only looks like paper if it has a paper texture. I'll press this button on the dial pad, which brings up the action ring. Then I can click on any of these customizable actions to directly apply them, or I can hover over something like contrast and use the dial to control the intensity of that effect, which is just super cool. Now, my paper can be a bit more punchier before I apply it. Just warp it a little bit to fit the perspective. But for even more authenticity, I'll throw in a second layer to give it a harsher, more wrinkled look. Kind of like it was made by a kid who hasn't quite mastered their fine motor skills yet. Let's touch up some of the lighting here, like getting this flap shadow in. Then these sharp edges are going to catch a nice rim light. And I would be sure to vary that in thickness because this edge definitely isn't a perfect crease. Maybe I'll even make a few of these wrinkles stand out a tad more. Now, of course, airplanes live in the big, bright blue sky, which I want a really defined light direction for so it matches the lighting on the plane. Of course, it'll be flying amongst the puffy clouds, which I'll attempt to arrange in some type of pleasing manner. Now, if you want a little tip to blend the clouds in better with the sky, just make the darkest part of the clouds the same color as the background. And now it looks much more natural. But now I am kind of afraid that the white plane blends in too much with the white clouds now. So what if we went with a more brown yellow tone for the paper to complement the blue sky behind it? I think that looks a lot better, but at this point, you still might be thinking something feels off here. Cause this kind of looks a lot more like cardboard than it does paper. And that is because paper is supposed to be transparent, which means that light should actually hit the paper and some of it passes through and hits the surfaces on the other side. So we'll see light gathering inside this flap, for example, but also coming through that and lightening up this shadow. The same thing happens with this tip over here. And this middle area is gonna be especially bright because not only do we have the light coming in from behind the paper, but rays that shoot into this gap are gonna bounce back and forth in between these two surfaces, brightening up the entire thing. The underside here is gonna get a little bit of that environmental light as well. Now, I think it's a universal truth that every piece of paper a kid owns has at least something doodled on it, like a little stick man kicking a ball or a chili ice cream cone melting in the sun. I mean, heck, it's even pretty common for school papers to even have stickers on them. And a basketball one seems fitting enough. Just wanna get this end peeling up away from the paper, like it's been there a while and it's starting to lose some of its stickiness. Maybe a tiny wrinkle over here to show it wasn't even put on perfectly in the first place. Lastly, a little shading to make it feel like it's actually on the paper. And with that, our simple telegram icon has been transformed into a realistic paper airplane soaring through the sky to deliver whatever message is written on the inside. That'll also fill up our second slot in the keypad quite nicely. Finally, we have the good old terminal, the app that lets you completely wreck your computer with only a few simple commands. But for real, this is obviously necessary if you're a developer or something like that. And its simple design makes it seem like it'd be an interesting challenge to make realistic. So I'm thinking we ditch the slick modern look and go for something super antiquated. Cause we all remember those ancient chunky tan monitors that were around when the only way to interact with your computer was through the terminal. We'll keep it simple with a two part casing with a deep decorative groove running between them. All of which will encompass a giant dark screen. Let's have the outer part of the case spinning away from the screen, catching some light in the upper part, but being largely in shadow on the lower part. The inner ring is gonna be bending towards the screen though, giving it the exact opposite reaction to the light. Might have to darken up old Trenchy here too. I think we'll probably want some visible edges along these rims just so they don't look razor sharp. Same thing for the panel in the center. And now I'm thinking of going with a really run down, corroded metal frame. Kind of like something you'd see out of the Fallout video 
game series. You definitely have to be careful with texture like this because it's very easy to overdo it. But if you want to stay safe, just make sure you distribute it kind of sporadically. I like don't just have a giant area full of it. Make some spots with heavy grunge and others with just a sprinkle. We've got to have at least one really rusty texture in here. And then my friends, we've got the big boy gouges. Getting rid of those yellow parts will leave just the darker ones behind, making it look like this tan paint is chipping off the metal frame. And you'll notice I'm focusing more around the edges of the computer because that's where it's most likely to be handled and thusly damaged. And maybe even the screen gives off a lot of heat and chips the paint that's close to it too. Now for the screen itself, I'll start with some shading to give the glass more of a bulbousy look because we definitely don't want it to feel too flat. And maybe a little shine up top along with a touch of bounce light from below. Now to really get things going, we've got some fuzzy vintage screen lines and a lot of these older screens tended to have a really dark ring right along the edges. It also seemed like a lot of them could only really produce a green color, so why not get a nice big green glow coming out of this panel? Now I definitely want to replicate these two characters that were on the original icon. I just want to do it with a very pixelated approach so we get a nice level of authenticity. With this resolution though, it's hard to say this screen would be useful for anything more than a game of Pong, but sometimes Pong is enough. Get those lines over top to match. And of course, all that green light is going to splash onto the case around it. The rim especially catching that nice colorful sheen. A healthy amount of scratches are in order because clearly nobody bothered to take care of this poor little machine and you better believe it's going to have its share of dust as well. Lastly, I just want to come in here and kind of roughen up some of these edges because after all this thing's been through, there's no way these are going to be perfectly straight anymore. And I just can't help myself, so I'm going to put one more layer of grunge over this entire thing. So just like that, we've gone from a fancy, minimal, modern console to an absolute beast that has survived more than one nuclear winter. And of course, we have now filled our last spot in the keypad. I honestly really recommend you guys go and check out the Logitech Creative Console. Every purchase comes with three free months of Adobe Creative Cloud. And I mean, these things work with basically any app. So whatever your workflow is, I think these will definitely improve it. Oh, and there's even a marketplace with plugins and action profiles, icons, and all sorts of other goodies. So I mean, just go check it out right now with the link down in the description. If you like this video and want to watch me do a super fun timed packaging design challenge, then click on this right here.